Hi, my name's Mark from G-Code Tutor, and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to discuss cutter compensation. So why do we need cutter compensation? Well, if we didn't use cutter compensation and we programmed our toolpaths to be the same size as our part, we would cut undersized by the radius of the cutter. This is because we program to the center line of our cutter. So if we're programming our dimensions on our part, the center line of the tool would follow that path and not the cutting edge. So that means we either have to program our parts a little bit bigger to compensate for the radius of our cutter, or we use cutter compensation. So when we use cutter compensation, the machine automatically compensates for the radius of our tool. So we're cutting to the size of the part. So when we're programming, we just need to program the same as the dimensions of our part and not allow for the size of our cutter. So for cutter compensation to be able to work, the machine needs to know the diameter of our tool. So if we're using a 10 millimeter diameter tool, we would offset it by five millimeters, the radius of our tool. But the machine can work this out. And this is how. So if we're offsetting our cutter to the left of the material, we would use G41 to tell the machine this is the direction we wish our cutter compensation to be applied. And if we're offsetting our cutter to the right of the material, we would use G42. And you often find G42 is more common in turning and G41 is more common in milling due to climb milling and the direction of cuts on a lathe. So if the cutter was rotating around the job in a clockwise direction, we would use G41 to offset the cutter to the left of the material. To offset the cutter to the right of the material, we would use G42. So imagine we're looking at behind the cutter here and as the cutter is traveling around, it's offset to the right. So here it's rotating around in an anti-clockwise direction. And this would also determine if we are using climb milling or not. Now, as you probably know, climb milling is more common on CNC machines because they have the recurring ball lead screw. So that eliminates backlash when we are climb milling unlike a manual machine that does not have this feature. So when we're working with cutter compensation, we can apply it in three different ways, depending on our machine controls. So these are the three ways that I've come across during my career. Please let me know if you know a different way. I'll be interested to hear about it. The first way is telling the machine the radius of the tool by using a P word after our cutter compensation G code. So whether we're using G41 or G42, that's followed by a P word with the radius of our tool so the machine knows how far to offset that cutter. A second way, a slightly more rare and uncommon way I've come across is by using an X value after our cutter compensation G code. And finally, the most common way, and that's just stating G41 or G42 to tell the machine we wish to apply cutter compensation. But then the machine would automatically take the geometry from the tool table in the machine and apply it. So it knows which tool and which offset we have selected. So it knows the dimensions of the tool. So when we just call G42, it takes that information from the machine tool table. Now this is by far the most common method I have come across personally. So let's take a look how this might appear inside our G-code program. Depending what method we are using to switch on cutter compensation, we may find it looks like this within our program. So we would just state G41 or G42, followed by our P word or X maybe, or maybe just G42 on its own. And we do this before we start to do any milling with our cutter and also after we have done a tool call. And when we wish to disable cutter compensation, we use G40. So that's normally after all movements have been done and we would state G40 to turn off our cutter compensation. So that's a very quick look at cutter compensation and how we apply it when we're writing G-code. 